Today what I'm working on is making a bracket to hold these forks in place so they won't shift side to side. I'm also gonna be making a little bracket that's gonna sit against the bottom of the bucket so that the little feet that screw down to hold the forks in place don't keep digging into the bucket. So let me just start off by saying there's absolutely nothing wrong with these forks. A lot of people use them. I've known people that have used them. They just screw them out of their bucket, run around, pick stuff up. No big deal, no drama. I'm just kind of a jerk that's trying to use them for other things than probably what they were meant for. So for just pallet forks or something like that, it's no big deal. When I actually go to lift up trees and things like that in my woods, they kind of move, the forks will move over a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is make sure that that doesn't happen when I go to get underneath the tree because sometimes I have to kind of get into the dirt just a little bit to get underneath the tree and lift it up. I'm gonna be using up some of my garbage metal for this project. So the burnishing polisher machine from Vivor is gonna be getting a lot of use. So I have a plan in place and obviously I hope it works. What I plan to do is use this piece of angle iron to hold another couple pieces of angle iron along the edges that'll keep this portion of the fork from moving back and forth. Then I'm going to make some notches here in this angle iron and put a washer and a nut on this bolt here that I'll be able to tighten down against this piece of angle iron to keep this from moving, to keep this piece from being not completely worthless. What I'm going to do is get everything squared up figure out where this screw is actually going to go through into this small piece of tubing and I'm going to drill a hole in this tubing then I'm going to put a lock washer on this wing nut and screw this in so it'll hold in place in that tubing. Last thing I'm going to do is take a piece of pipe and weld it to a piece of angle iron that this foot will fit inside that I'll be able to screw down into the piece of pipe to hold this in place then this piece of metal can sit there and move around a little bit if it's going to move when I get this tightened down pretty tight. And then I'll sit here and beat up this piece of metal instead of my bucket. I left about a foot of distance between the edge of the bucket and the forks on either side. So that means the forks on my tractor are gonna be about 27 inches apart. My metal bandsaw is buried in the other garage, so I'm gonna be doing this the semi sort of hard way. In order for this thing to work, these pieces on the sides are going to have to be the squarest pieces I've ever put together. I want these brackets to fit tight up against the forks. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind my, my tack welds off and I won't have anything welded on this side. Get 
get out the serious speed square for this one. So you want to be careful when welding on a vehicle of any kind because obviously you're using a lot of current to go through and create the weld and you could also fry your electronics. So you can either disconnect the battery, make sure the terminals aren't laying against anything, or what I'm going to do in this case is just clamp the piece on, take it back to the table and weld it. I know it might be tempting just to hold the piece up there, tack it in place, but you might end up getting yourself into trouble. One quick quality control check. So now would be a good time to apologize to Vivor. When I was doing the review of this drill, the one thing I forgot to mention, and actually it was a viewer that caught it, is I forgot that you could move this drill up and down so you can put longer bits in. And so if you undo this Allen key, this Allen screw here, this will move up and down. You can put your regular drill bits in the drill. These bolts that go in the forks are 16 millimeters. Usually I would have to just choose Anger and my plasma cutter, but now that I have this drill, I can just punch through metal pretty quick. If you get a chance, check these things out. I'm not saying that for Vivor's sake, even though I like Vivor. I'm saying it for your sake. This thing has really helped me with my shop Anger issues. As I mentioned before, these bolts are metric. So don't think you're just gonna go back to the tool shed and go get a nut for this unless you're really into metric stuff. This is also gonna be something that I'm not gonna do all the time. If I need to move trees or something like that, I'll go put this in place. Otherwise, it's just gonna be just the forks. So how this is gonna work is I'm gonna, this will be screwed onto the bottom of the bolt and I'll tighten this, the bolt down as tight as I can, and then I'll come behind it and tighten this nut down, and then I'll be in good shape. It's getting late, and I have a lot to do tomorrow, so I'm gonna call it quits, but tomorrow, what I'm gonna do is start with the angle iron, put the angle iron along the bottom. I'm gonna get a couple pieces of pipe and weld them onto that angle iron. That's what these little feet are gonna set into. Then after I get that done, and I get everything tightened up, then that's where I'll go ahead and punch the hole through this piece of tubing. So I'm a little tired today. I worked my eight hours out of the plant, then went and did a side job, and now I hope to get these forks completely put together and go try it out tonight. And once again, public service announcement, there's plenty of work out there in the trades, so if your kids are living with you until they're 40 and you didn't push them to the trades, it's your fault. So what I'm gonna start with is getting my piece of angle iron cut, and then I'm gonna cut the two pieces of pipe that this bolt's gonna screw down into.
So what's going on here is the bolt, the bent over portion of the bolt is bottoming out before it comes down and tightens up the fork. But I have a piece of half inch steel here that is gonna keep this tight. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece of this and then weld that little piece of pipe onto this and then I'll weld that onto the angle iron. The reason I'm doing all this is I want this to form a good solid made against the bucket. I don't want to use any type of tubing or anything like that. I want that to be completely solid against the bucket here. I have my little feet in place. I'm going to mark them exactly where they're at right now and then go ahead and weld them. So this thing's still super hot, so I'm not gonna leave it on the bucket. But you'll notice that I didn't weld in a few places. That's because really, this is just supposed to be held in place. I don't really, it's not really structural at all. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this up, and then I'm gonna use fluid film to spray this, because you can tell how messed up this metal is. Obviously, you take a while to sit there and work at this and try to get all of that rust off. So I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm just gonna fluid film it up because I'm probably gonna be storing this outside anyway. And that fluid film's good because it'll go creep into everything and keep everything protected. While I'm waiting for that piece to cool down, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing squared up and get the hole drilled in for the bolt with the wing nut on it so I can just screw it into that other piece of tubing and help keep this thing a little bit more stable. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be super close. Before anybody comments on this and talks about how this bolt going through here is going to destroy this metal, wreck this bolt, open this hole up, I know that that's gonna happen. What I'm going to do in the future is probably take these two pieces, probably take the two pieces here and just put a solid piece in and then put these on the sides. I'm going to get a lock washer for this to hold this in place and then I'm going to install this, set this thing up. If you do decide to build something like this contraption, make sure that you don't tighten down on stuff like this too tight because there's a, there's a threaded, like some threaded nuts through this, this tubing right here and you don't want to strip those out. So make sure you don't sit there and crank down on this nut, squish anything in or wreck something. Right now, I mean, this is pretty tight. It's the whole bucket that's moving. It's not the forks. So they're per staying pretty stable. Now let's see what happens when we get some force on them. Who knows, maybe I'll get down there, this thing doesn't work, and I'll sit down there and cry for a while.
I'm actually pretty happy with the way this turned out. I will say that you have to be careful with these buckets and thank you to the person that told me about it. So I can already tell that I'm bending the bucket a little bit. Those are oak trees that I was moving, so they're pretty heavy. But I did want to put a little bit of force on this thing because I wanted to make sure that these forks were gonna work. All there is left to do is wire wheel all this metal down pretty well. And I'm gonna put some paint on it that's a rust converter. And then I'm gonna put regular paint on it and then throw some fluid film on the forks and everything. And then go put it outside and hopefully it'll last for a few years. So I'm glad to finally get these forks built. Like I said, I'm not gonna put heavy stuff on it anymore. These past few videos, I've just been trying some things out. So the reason I wanted the forks a little bit closer together was so I could cut the logs down pretty small and go ahead and just lift one log at a time. You can kind of see how the bucket's starting to get warped a little bit. But glad this video is done. I know people have been asking about it, so I hope this helps. I've only been welding for about 17 minutes of my life, so I'm pretty sure if I can do it, you guys can do it. And I'm totally not joking about the whole side job thing. The reason that our channel maybe ha maybe doesn't have consistent videos is because I'm constantly busy with side work. So I'm trying to kind of do the side work, do my full-time job, and do this as well. So all joking aside, as somebody who is, I have a bachelor's degree in chemistry and a master's degree in education, and I work at a place that requires a high school diploma. If your children don't know what they want to do, I'm telling you, go to a trade school and they will do just fine. I'm telling you, there is plenty of work out there. So I thank you so much for everybody that has supported our channel. Thanks for watching.